So escape. Escape. It's weird. It's it's spelled just like the word escape, but it's got this cool exit. Dory, let's go. Uh, star, star. Okay, but now we have to figure out what password is the secret one. We're not leaving without it. We still have this Harold thing. Is your name Harold? Is it like how do I get to? Oh yeah, it's a safe. Uh, that's safe. I want the file. I want to get to that. I want to get to that thing. Why can I not get to that thing? Now is it is it pointing at? No, that's the very edge of it. It's not it's not pointing at this. It's pointing over there. I want to get over there. Can I like zoom in and then move around? No. Can I click here to go over that way? No. That's the door we came in through. There's no point in going back. I want to go over there though. Can I do it? Can I do that? Um... Oh, well, let's see if uh, the X's mean anything. Let's see if the X's mean anything. Um, this would be R. This would be E M. Nothing on that one. This one is the I. Right? Yeah, I. And the N and the I. Remini? What a weird. Uh, this isn't going to work, is it? Um, S, C, and then E, N, and then C, E. Wait, that is a word. Isn't it? No. Reminisce? Did I do that one right? I hope I did. I'm just going to type in these letters and see if it does anything. So what I'm doing now is I went to where I got that first little bit with the password, and now I'm just doing all the other letters. And this is what I ended up coming with. R E Rem Me yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Since we know that the the real password and the escape pa like the secret password and the escape password are the same like general area or idea then i just was like well what about the other ones it's moon moon and sun cool. and now we still have the um thing for harold though I guess that was just for the the one one zero one zero. Can I do a thing with you now? It's eyes. It's going red. Can I go over here now? I guess not. 
Okay, well that's creepy. Let's do the blue one first. So, moon, moon, sun. Golden file. What's with the attitude? Never mind, just, let's, let's just see what's inside of it. Now, can we read these secret things yet? There's a uh, half a page of one we didn't get to read because Incism told us to wait. These things. That actually makes me think I shouldn't read those. Um. There's Gollum. We won't because our good friend Incism tells me not to, so I won't. And I trust his judgment. We will definitely read through all those at the very least when we unlock every single other um, ending of the game. Alright, yep. Run away! Run away! Aw, oh, Evie. Nice to meet you all. Evie, happy Saturday. Thanks for that beautiful host and raid. What a rock star you are. Hope everyone's having a happy Saturday. We are on this much of this ridiculous game. Who were you playing before you came in here? Just so I know. Hope you're having a great weekend, too. Hope that you could come and spread some love and some happiness and some positivity. Um, but for those coming in, we are playing the second of the nonary games, or Zero Escape, and we are working down the left time thing. If this makes no sense to you, this is an escape game with a really good story, timelines that these are all different op like options for the game. There's puzzles, there's horror, there's different timelines, there's different escape rooms and different endings that you can or cannot finish. And right now, we are working towards the left side. And the fun thing is there are nine different endings and we haven't even gotten one and we've been playing the game for like 18 hours. And in this one, I, we are going to do all these. But if you like puzzles, if you like positivity, I hope you can stick around for a little bit, because Eevee's pretty nice. And I'm glad... Hat and Time. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but it sounds great. But we just finished this uh, room. I think, because we just opened the safe. The secret safe opening and the real safe opening. That's good, isn't it? Better than having nothing, at least. First, we've got... The map of floor B. Map we found in the lounge was floor A, because we're on a different floor. Took the river down to get here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Keep going. There's a lot in here. Must be. Moon cards, we need those. Must have been what the announcer was talking about. We've got two of them, just like the sun cards. You should take one, Luna. Why? You're solo. Alice and I can keep the other one. Of course. Thank you. Alright, who's next? Looks like a note. Is this a new hair? Are some more AB rules for you? Not voting is not a option. If both parties refuse to vote, then everybody gets penalized. If you're wondering why there's bunny quotes, it's the person who wrote this is an actual bunny. In other words, one person out of every color group have three has to vote. So all three of us can't abstain. There has to be at least one vote. Why would there be a rule like that, though? It seems pointless. I think Zero Senior wants to make sure people are actually playing the game, regardless of the situation. What sort of situation are you talking about? Well, it could be anything, really. Whatever. We only got two things left. What's this thing? Looks like a plug or a key. I'd go with both. Guess you insert it in something and twist. Did you see anything like that here that I could fit it into? If we did, does it really matter at this point? Look in the safe. What's the last thing in there? Oh, the other key. So that's the key to the exit, so now we have this jumbo key thing too. Cool. We still have the tablet in our inventory. Wait! What should we do about the plug? 
Um, fine, I guess I'll hold on to it. I doubt we'll need it, but you never know. Let's go. No, that unlocks K's! That's the thing for K. I was looking at the color scheme. That's the thing for K. That's the thing for K. Um, he's another character in the game with a helmet on his head. There's a Celtic song with that line in there. The helmet on his head. Can't remember the rest of it though. Open the door and escape -o. Master of Escapology, I sure am. Now, Top Governor. What? Was that you, Luna? No. Alice? You honestly think a voice that coarse could come from a throat as fine as this? Probably. Oh yeah, that was uh that was me, mate. Oh, mate? Over here. Are you the robot? Sima, look! Are you the robot we just turned on? Please be the robot. Yeah. Oh, blimey, that hurts. Ah, ain't right for a fellow's back to feel like this. It's a robot. And it's talking. It sure is. With an accent. A great accent. Can't help it, Flower. Didn't choose to talk like this. Not by half. Now, Alice, darling, do I rightly recollect you characterizing my speech as course well that's right cruel it is i love this guy you really think i asked for this see <laughs> they figured they give us all a um uh, what you call them a uh, personality <laughs> some tosser thought they give me this one it ain't right i tell you i like this guy so what the heck are you cooper hey cooper if you're a barrel maker, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> I don't get that joke. Right you are, my old son. Right you are. Well, go on. Have a butchies, mate. What do I look like to you? Robot, you say? No, nearly there, but they call us golems round here. Golem? Oh, I've heard of golems. They're sort of monsters, I guess, from Jewish folklore. They're made from clay, and they look like men. They're supposed to do whatever their master or creator. Hey, Cooper is a barrel maker. Oh, okay. Well, aren't you a clever bird? You are, of course, correct. The golem of myth is a clay creation that moves under its own power. Our spellings are my different, though. The original blokes are spelled G O L E M. I'm blow my nose while well, this is going on. G A U L E. That's an acronym for General Purpose Autonomous Labor Electronic Machine. And the truth to tell, it's a bit rubbish when you write it out all like that. But I figured they wanted to make sure they had the golem thing in there, you know? What with us being robots and all. Should I just call you Golem? Uh, that don't seem quite kosher. After all, all of me mates here are golems too. I couldn't very well call all of you lot human, could I? What should we call you then? Well, we've all got a product ID, and they're unique. I figure that's as good a name as any. And your ID is? GTM-CM-G-OLM. That's way too long. We can't remember that. What? You taking the mickey out of me? No, just... Never had a problem myself. Let's get a nickname. Right, then. Let's just use the last bit, shall we? G O L M Gollum. <laughs> Never back to Gollum. I'll be buggered. <laughs> Can't say I ever noticed that before. Sure, it's a strange coincidence, isn't it? All right, Gollum. You said Alice, darling, a little bit ago, right? A gentleman can't say something nice to a pretty young bird, I eh? <laughs> No, I don't care if you call her darling. What I'm saying is, you called her Alice. How did you know her name? <laughs> oh, she ain't the only one of you lot whose name I know. 
I know who you are, Sigma, and you too, Luna. <laughs> I'm right familiar with all nine of you. How? You don't know? No. Well, they got cameras all over this place. Well, then again, the lenses aren't much bigger than a screw. And they're all in the way. So I suppose I can't really blame you for missing them, huh? Now, as I was saying, there were these cameras, you see. And all of the data they record gets sent off to the mainframe in real time. So, I just gave the main core a ring, got those videos, and now I know everything you've done. Okay. Does that mean... you're Zero Junior? Cool, blimey. Are you bleeding serious? Well, you gotta be off your box if you think I'm Young Master Zero. The Young Master is a right proper AI what supervises all the electronic bits and bobs in this place. Sorry, Joy, I gave it made you want cookies. My humble self, and knows with a misfortune to be like me, are more akin to computer terminals who are merely borrowing a little bit of the central core. So Glorms are kind of like Zero Junior's servants? Um, uh, no, not quite, Governor, not quite. I love that this guy says I'd Governor. I'd say me and me mates here are more like, uh, arms and legs, right? Now, you lot don't have brains in your arms and legs, do you? Of course not. Right you are, missus. It'd be all sorts of nasty if your elbows and that lumpy bit on your ankle was all packed with brains. Well, we're like your arms or legs. The Gollum seat of consciousness, so to speak, ain't in the head. In fact, the matter is, it's not anywhere in the body. Which makes a fellow wonder, where is it? In the mainframe? Spot on. So that part of me what thinks is in the mainframe. Everything this here body sees and hears and what have you, that all gets sent back there. This is kind of the same, we had a conversation about this in the first game, about the consciousness or morphogenic field being the hub and our bodies are actually just extensions of it like an arm and a leg then the mainframe does some sort of computery jiggery pokery and comes up with some decisions and and those decisions beget commands now those commands are sent over the wireless like boop, 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 and eventually my body picks them up <laughs> finally those commands cause actions what move the various bits in my body that's why this thing's like a computer terminal, you see. The body's just an output device of sorts. If we were talking about one of them personal computers here, you could say a golem's kind of like a uh, a monitor, right? Huh? Wait a minute. We had this conversation then in the first Then wouldn't that one. make you part of Zero Junior? Well, I suppose you could say that. What with us sharing the mainframe and all. <laughs> but I don't know shit all about this game he's running. That part of the mainframe is locked away from the rest of us. Okay. I'm an independent core. Uh, Zero and I are two different blokes. You recollect what Gollum stands for, huh? I'm autonomous. So you run on your own, basically. But if that's the case, your hands and feet analogy doesn't really make sense. That's a good point. My, my arms and legs aren't autonomous. They don't just move on their own, unless you hit a... Uh, you sure, Governor? I watched you cross your arms just now. And now you're, you're frowning and your forehead's getting all wrinkly. Did you do these things on purpose? Well, when you crossed your arms, were you thinking, Right then, let's cross them, shall we? Curl on down then, mouth. Oh, and eyebrows. I'd be much obliged if you'd squeeze in a bit. There's a good pair of blokes. This is an That's interesting what idea. Thinking, isn't it? No? <laughs> Didn't reckon so. I figured you did all of that subconsciously. Ain't very no man fair on point. Earth who says to himself, feeling a mite nervous, I'll just twitch me leg around a bit, you know? Who's thinking real hard about something and says to themselves, well, I think I'll just give the old loaf a scratch, that'll help. How's about when you reach for your tea? When you turn a page in your book? Or what about when your eyes just go straight for the pair on that bird you fancy? <laughs> yeah, the list goes on, me chums. But all of those things are your subconscious at work. Well, true, when part of your body does something, it's because your brain said so. But that don't mean your conscious mind is involved. 
<laughs> Fact is, it can't be. If your brain had to deal with all the piddly bits of living, it'd make you balmy. <laughs> That's how us golems and a young master get along. You, um, uh, you got it all sorted now, chums? Then you're saying that Zero Junior is the central part of the mainframe, and the golems are like his hands and feet? Righto. Righto. So now we have a pirate. Uh, blimey. Uh, guess I shouldn't be talking about such heavy rubbish, eh? My shoulders are all stiff. Good Englishman. <laughs> your robot, how can your shoulders get stiff? And you said your back hurt earlier. Are you just messing with us? Yes, I did. And no, I ain't. Me back is a right mess, it is. Last maintenance check, they just left me here. I've been on this bed here for years. <sighs> the lubricant for me joints is all gummed up. Every time I move, it hurts. But why did you wake up again after all this time? My bad. What do you think, love? Because you lot turned me on his wife, especially that other missus over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That button on top of the safe. Right you are, governor. Can you come with us, then? The others need to see this. <laughs> no, I can't. It more's a pig. I can only go as far as this cable here will let me. Oh, I've got okay. internal batteries, but they're knackered. As a matter of fact, that's why I was here for maintenance in the first place. Hmm. The same goes for these other blokes, too. Of course, they ain't connected to a power cable like I am, so they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. I see. So, you aren't going to answer my question. Huh? What question is that? I asked you how your shoulders can get stiff if you're a robot. Right, right, so you did. Not sure why you've got to bug up your ass about that particular issue, though. Know? Well, I mean, I guess it's not really important, but... I'm just curious, I suppose. Curious, are you? Oh, that's a good word, that is. A good, powerful word. The kind of word that will set any robot's heart to flutter. Let's get you sorted then, shall we? Just lend me your laws of peers for a tick. So... How can a robot Ooh, joy, get stiff shoulders? And what does pain mean to a robot? Yeah, what does it mean? Thank you, Joy. You ever heard of the Chinese room? Without warning for an answer, Gaul launched into his explanation. Somewhere, a pretty young girl is trapped in a tiny room. The door of the room has a slot that a number of Chinese people outside the room can use to slide slips of paper to the girl. On the pieces of paper are questions written naturally in Chinese. Unfortunately, the young lady has no idea what the questions say. But then, how could she? She's never learned Chinese. Apart from a Hong Kong action movie or two in college, she's never even heard it. So for this unfortunate young lady, each note looks like nothing more than a bunch of strange symbols. Before she was locked away, she was given an order, specifically, she was told to write an appropriate response to each question you received and slip that answer back through the slot. Once the Chinese questions began to show up, however, she finds herself at a loss. Oh dear, she says to herself. What? I can't read these at all. Whatever am I to do? It is at that moment that she spots a bookshelf. The bookshelf is filled with thick books. Upon examining them, she discovers that they are some sort of Chinese phrase books. They have no explanation of what anything means, but show Chinese responses to Chinese questions. Am I supposed to use these? The questions keep coming, more and more, and more of them. She finds the set of characters that correspond to the set of characters on the paper, and carefully writes out the indicated response. How's it going? Is it all? It's awful. Please get me out of here. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. Here they give her some twice-cooked pork. Are you full? Yes, although I don't think my stomach liked it very much. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I am dating a reggae dancer. When was your first kiss? When I was 14, he was a grade ahead of me in school. What color of underwear are you wearing? Black. Dude, she answered that? 
It's never worked for me. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get out of this room? Beat the stuffing out of whoever's sending me these questions with the pan you cooked that twice-cooked pork in. All these questions were written in Chinese. And the answers were also written in Chinese. All the young lady did was accurately copy the symbols from the phrase book onto the slips of paper with no idea what any of it meant. Incidentally, she doesn't have a dancer boyfriend. In fact, she's never even kissed a boy. Also, she's wearing white underwear. Anyway, um, about to say, she wouldn't just answer that. Yes? Is there any particular reason this girl is, um, pretty? Or, or why we need to know what color underwear she's wearing? It's very important. Can't say there is. This tickles me fancy, I guess. But the prettier the bird is, the more fun the story is, isn't it? <laughs> I agree. So does Sigma. What? What? Right. Well, what I wanted to say was this. All them Chinese blokes outside the room didn't know nothing about them books what she had. So it follows that they would have thought whoever was inside spoke Chinese just like them. You see? After all, far as I can tell, they're having a nice little chin way with one of their countrymen. Hmm. Interesting, but what does that have to do with your shoulders? Or a robot feeling pain? You thick. I'm trying to understand it before he explains it. He's trying to make sense of it responding in human humans would say that your shoulders hurt when this happens i feel pain when my body's having a spot of bother well wow, hold up mate this ain't right we keep this up and we're buggered if things go really pear-shaped we'll be brown bread so says the central computer to itself seeing that things are a bit bollocksed in the interest of extricating my body from his unpleasant predicament the mainframe sends out a signal over the wireless and my software interprets that signal as pain and I stop doing whatever daft thing I was doing. Oh. It's the same in it, just like the Chinese room. So you're saying the robots feel pain differently than humans, right? Use your loaf, missy. You listen to a word I've said. A human feels pain when you do something you shouldn't, like sit your bum down on a tap, right? Oh, okay. Same thing for us robots. Making sense. I like it. If you feel like being clever about it, there ain't really that much different between a human and a robot. Forget all about that mainframe and signal bollocks. And us golems ain't that different from the bird in the room. So think about it now. How do you know humans ain't the same just without all the electronic y pony, huh? What if when someone asks you a question, all you're doing is pulling out the right answer from some sort of phrase book in your brain? So philosophical. There's no way to prove that, of course, but far as I can see, there ain't no reason to. I mean, it's all the same, isn't it? If you're actually a thinking creature, or if you're just some kind of language processing machine, all what matters is if the person next to you does what a human ought. Looks like a person, acts like a person, and talks like a person, then it's probably a person. Probably. You want to live a normal life? That's all you need to know. This is really supporting that K is now a robot. Hey, can I ask you something? Lay it on me, Governor. Why'd you stop us? Ah, right you are, mate. Right you are. Got so carried away, I near forgot. I haven't seen anyone for yonks, and I got a mighty excited as all. Ugh, just spit it out. Right, right. Well, uh, there was something I wanted to tell you, guys. What was it? Patience, darling. Now, I know I might look a bit out of sorts at the moment, but I ain't really supposed to. Same thing for the rest of the blokes here. Okay. Fact is, the reason we look a bit like skeletons is because we are a bit like skeletons. It is this special artificial biological tissue what's called ABT. When a golem's all new and shiny, they've got a nice suit of ABT over that metal skeleton. Makes us look right human, it does. Even feels like real skin, with pores, a little bit of hair, and a few pimples, scars, and the like. 
<laughs> Truth to tell, I doubt you'd be able to tell the real from the fake, even if it was right in front of you. See, right in the middle. Command violation. Rogue processes detected. Product ID G T M C M G O L M. Executing emergency deactivation. Ooh, you weren't supposed to know that. Unit G T M C M G O L M. Now inactive. So if I go to what he was trying to say, 